uh, I said analysis of DNA. How can we analyze this DNA? That can be DNA sequence analysis, DNA sequencing, sequencing the DNA, or other uh, genotyping methods. DNA analysis. DNA analysis methods, uh, DNA sequencing, and genotyping. So, uh, again, if we classify the DNA, uh, DNA analysis methods, methods, I can say there are two groups of methods. One of them is DNA sequencing, and the second one is genotyping. While we are here, let me split this as well. DNA sequencing can be Sanger sequencing, up to, uh, we can say limited, up to uh, like 800 base pairs. By the way, BP means, not PB, BP, BP means base pair, okay? Have you ever, have you ever heard BP before? All right, base pairs. So uh, with Sanger sequencing, you can sequence up to 100 base pairs and you can uh, sequence only like one exon or a piece of exon or a specific, a special region on the DNA. But you can, on one reaction, in one reaction, you cannot go or you cannot read more than 800 base pairs. Also, there are other sequencing methods, next generation, next generation sequencing methods. Uh, it's also called MGS, next generation sequencing. You can also uh, use next generation sequencing methods. Uh, there are different techniques for next generation uh, for next generation sequencing. And with next generation sequencing, we can do whole exome sequencing. Uh, sorry, whole genome sequencing. Or whole exome sequencing. Or panel sequencing. Also, transcriptome sequencing. This is from RNA. Uh, what else? Uh, there are other, there are some other methods, but these should be enough for you at the moment because we are going to go into details in the future. Okay, so these are next gen sequencing methods. So there are two groups of uh, methods for DNA sequencing. The first one is Sanger sequencing, with the, which is uh, the classical method, which is gold standard, gold standard, uh, but it's limited to eight hundred base pairs. In one reaction, you cannot read more than 800 base pairs. If you want to read more, you have to do more reactions. Uh, and it is uh, usually, it is dependent on PCR or cloning. You have two options. Uh, before Sanger sequencing, first, you have to amplify your DNA. You have to make a lot of copies of your uh, DNA, your target DNA. You have two options for that. You can do PCR or uh, you can clone the target DNA into a plasmid, which you know. Then 
uh, make copy uh, make copies of that plasmid inside the bacterial cells. So uh, cloning that uh, piece of DNA. But in next generation sequencing methods, you use directly the genomic DNA without need a specific uh, cloning or a specific PCR. And with next generation sequencing, you can read the sequence of whole genome. Or you can read only the coding regions, but coding regions of all genes, all exons of all genes. Or you can select a group of genes. For example, you can say, I want to sequence only cancer genes. I want to sequence only uh, oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. You can uh, decrease, uh, you can decrease uh, the, uh, you can decrease your filter uh, size, or you can sequence the transcriptome, which means you can sequence also RNA, and you can sequence the whole RNA content in a tissue, in a special tissue or in a cell. There are also options of next generation sequencing uh, for single cell sequencing. So you can even sequence uh, the genome of a single cell or transcriptome of a single cell or uh, only all messenger RNAs in, the, in, uh, the, uh, in a tissue or a single cell. So difference between next-gen sequencing and Sanger sequencing is with next-gen sequencing, you don't have a limit. You don't have, to, you don't have to have a limit. So you can read everything in the genome, every single base in the genome. Or uh, you can, uh, you can uh, read, uh, you can read only the exomes of every single gene which means the whole exome. Mitochondrial DNA is included as well because uh, if you do genome sequencing, Emre, if you do genome sequencing, you don't do any selection. You sequence everything which is DNA. You sequence every DNA. So with genome sequencing, you can sequence mitochondrial DNA as well. But for exome sequencing, uh, we apply uh, a selection. So we use synthetic probes for every single uh, exon. Then it depends on uh, the uh, it depends on uh, how you prepare your uh, probes for exon sequencing. Uh, I don't know the exon sequencing uh, kits include the mitochondrial DNA, but in genome sequencing you also sequence mitochondrial DNA as well. So if there is any viral DNA. If there is any uh, virus infection or any other infection in the uh, cell, any other uh, microbial, microbial uh, genome remnant or whole microbial, microbial genome in the cell, they are sequenced as well. So once you do genome sequencing, you sequence everything which is DNA.